Hello and welcome back to section number five, serving model predictions with TensorFlow on GCP. Now it's finally time to put our model into production and serve it on GCP. In this section, you will learn the different ways to put a model into production on GCP. And these ways are essentially using a framework called TF Serving, using the service by Google called AI Platform, and utilizing cloud functions for serving model prediction. So let's start with the first video, the overview, methods for serving TensorFlow models on GCP. As discussed earlier, there are different approaches that you can use to put your model into production and to serve model predictions on GCP. We will briefly look at those three possibilities here and evaluate the pros and cons of each strategy. So let's start with the TF serving framework. As you might recall from our videos before in the TensorFlow architecture, a dedicated service for deploying TensorFlow models in a production environment. And this framework is called TensorFlow Serving. This framework is really, really handy to put models of TensorFlow into production. We will briefly look at it and see how it works. So what is TensorFlow Serving? This is the main architecture of it. As you can see on the left side, you have a client application that posts a request to a server where TF Serving is running. And what TF Serving is doing, it is handling a lot of things in the background for you. For example, TF Serving is accessing the file system where you can handle different versions of your model. And um, TF Serving will make sure that these models are correctly loaded, that they will be served in a scalable way, and that you don't have to deal with all these underlying issues here. It basically provides you a framework where you can take your model that you exported using the safe model format and provide it using a simple REST interface to clients. And this is how your responses or your predictions will be, will be given back to the application that is requesting it. If you look at the arrow below, this is a response element which contains the prediction that TensorFlow Serving is making. So this is a high level overview of TensorFlow Serving. Let's look at the advantages or the main characteristics of it. So when we talk about inference using TensorFlow Serving, then definitely one point is scalability. Although TensorFlow Serving is running on a server, it is completely capable of running also on a cluster of server. And if you combine this with, for example, a load balancer, you can easily achieve high scalability with your TensorFlow serving infrastructure. Also, TensorFlow serving was built from the ground up to achieve low latency. So if you want to deliver fast model predictions, then TensorFlow serving is definitely for you. Also, TensorFlow serving was built especially for multiple models and multiple model versions. It is clear that in a production environment, you need to update your model. You need to keep track of different versions of it. And TensorFlow Serving helps you to organize this and to access the model version that you actually need for a specific purpose. It is completely production ready. So TensorFlow Serving is nothing that is experimental. You can use it in a production environment. It is battle tested in, in a real environment. So you can use it for your daily workflows. On the downside of it maybe is that of course, TensorFlow Serving is a framework that needs to be installed on a server. So there is definitely some server handling or cluster handling required or involved. So I'd say these are like the main characteristics or points that you would need to know for TensorFlow Serving for now. We will implement it later on. But for now, let's proceed to the next option or the next way to put models into production on GCP. And this is AI Platform. Now, what is AI Platform? We discussed it already in the first section of this course, where we said that AI Platform essentially is the workbench that caters the whole ML process, from ingesting data up to developing your model, training your model, testing it, and finally also deploying the model. And this is where we are going to talk about now, the specific feature of AI Platform, which is called AI Platform Predictions. So what is that? And what's the main purpose, main goal of it? Of course, AI platform predictions is highly scalable. This service was built from the ground up to completely cater any scale that you could imagine. AI platform is running completely serverless. And that means you don't have to worry about scalability essentially, because this will be handled for you in the background. 
It also provides low latency, of course, because essentially TensorFlow Serving is also powering AI platform. So you can imagine AI platform predictions a bit like a serverless version of TensorFlow Serving. So it also supports multiple models and versions, so you get the whole benefits of TensorFlow Serving. It is production ready, of course, it's a paid service by Google. And as I said before, it's completely serverless. So if you don't want to deal with any underlying infrastructure or with managing servers, then AI Platform is for you. And then there's also a third way, which is not so commonly known as the other two ways to serve model predictions. And that is utilizing cloud functions for TensorFlow. So we haven't talked about cloud functions yet. So what are cloud functions? And this is just a brief X course on it and just a brief introduction. Imagine you have a service that triggers an event, for example, an HTTP call to that cloud function. Then this cloud function is running a short script, maybe in Python or any other languages that is supported. The main goal of cloud functions is basically twofold. So either cloud function gives a response back to the service that requested or that sent the event to cloud functions, or the other possibility is that cloud functions triggers another service in the background for you. So cloud functions are often used for as trigger other services or to give some immediate feedback to the application that was sending the event. So one important thing here to know is that cloud functions were built as a multi-purpose tool. So cloud functions were not built especially for machine learning purposes, but you could do anything with it essentially. However, it doesn't make sense or cloud functions were not built for using heavy workloads that take maybe minutes or even longer to execute. So if you have functions, functionalities that take a couple of seconds to execute, then this is what cloud function was built for. It's not built for complex workflows or complex functions that take minutes or even more to execute. So if you have a couple of seconds, then this is exactly the runtime that is expected for a cloud function. And one takeaway message here is that cloud functions respond to events. So cloud functions only do something when they are invoked, when they are called, when some event is happening, for example, an HTTP call. Otherwise, they are not being used. And this is also where the concept of cold and hot invocation comes into play. Because if a cloud function hasn't been invoked for a while, then this function is called the first event that is sent to that function. It will cause the function to load in the background. So changing its state from a cold to a hot state. And this can take a couple of milliseconds, sometimes even seconds. So be aware that cloud functions not that often used may take a while to load initially. So, but what does it mean now for machine learning inference with cloud functions? Of course, scalability isn't an issue here. Cloud functions are also working completely serverlessly. So uh, they scale automatically. They are serverless, as I said before. So you don't need to manage any infrastructure or deal with servers in the background. They have a very low latency when they are hot, but a high latency when they are cold. And they are multipurpose, so not exclusively for ML inference. Um, but on the other hand, that is a good thing because they are quite flexible. You could do basically anything with it, unless it does not exceed a certain runtime. So as I said, everything that runs maybe until 30 seconds should be working fine with cloud functions, but don't try to put heavy workloads on there that run uh, several minutes or so. So yeah, what does it mean now if we compare all those three options? I mean, which approach should you take when you deploy your model to GCP? So often in life, this depends. So let's quickly compare those three possibilities here, these three approaches, and see how they compare. So talking about ML framework installation, then TensorFlow Serving is basically included if you load a compute engine with an image from AI platform notebooks. That means if you start a AI platform notebook with a certain image where TensorFlow is installed, then you will have that framework already installed. On AI platform, TensorFlow and other frameworks are also preloaded. And only on cloud functions, you need to explicitly say which libraries you require using a file called requirements text. So talking about machine learning framework support, then TensorFlow Serving is 
basically using the latest version because you could install anything on your own server. AI Platform is a service, a managed service for you, so it has only predefined versions. And for example, by the time of this recording, AI Platform does not support TensorFlow 2. So I expect it to happen in the near future. But if you are, for example, working with beta releases or anything that was just released, then this typically takes some time before it is available on AI Platform. And cloud functions, of course, they also support the latest version because that's just what you specify in the requirements text. Let's talk about the setup configuration. So for TF serving, we will see in the next video that it's quite minimal to do it. It's quite easy. In AI platform or on AI platform, you need to deploy your model either via command line console or a YAML file. And that's pretty easy and straightforward. Only for cloud functions, you actually need to develop some server code that is executed for that function. So talking about infrastructure management, of course, TensorFlow Serving essentially is a framework which runs on a server. So you need to configure that server. You need to deal with that server. If you want scalability, then you need a cluster of machines and a load balancer, and you have to manage that. AI Platform, on the other hand, and Cloud Functions, they are completely serverless. You don't have to deal anything with underlying server infrastructure. Talking about scalability. Yes, TensorFlow Serving is scalable, as I said, if you combine it with clusters. AI Platform and Cloud Functions, due to their serverless nature, are completely scalable to almost any degree. And then talking about pricing. I try to compare it here a little bit, which is quite difficult because the pricing models of those three ways or approaches is quite different. For example, if you run TensorFlow serving on a Google Compute Engine, then the framework itself won't cost you any money. But of course, the runtime of the machine where this is running, you will need to pay for that. On the other hand, AI platform and cloud functions also charge you for runtime. But of course, only when those things are actually involved. So you could maybe say that if you have workflows where you have a consistent stream of operations, where, for example, predictions are happening all the time, then probably it will be cheaper for you to work with a compute engine that is running all the time. But if you have like peak workloads where you have something happening during certain times of the day, for example, where you have certain peak workloads, then AI platform in the end might even be cheaper for you, although the uh, price per hour is definitely higher here compared to a Google Compute Engine. And last but not least, where should we use these techniques? So how about the use for inference in production environment? Which of these tools can we use for production environment? As I said before, TensorFlow Serving and AI Platform were built for this. So yes, definitely, you can use them in a production environment. Cloud function, I put a no here. Why did I put a no? Because, of course, cloud functions can be used in a production environment. But for machine learning purposes, it's just that they were not exactly built for this. You don't have the comfort that you get, for example, from TensorFlow Serving or AI Platform. And this is, for example, a constant stream of low latency. You have to deal with hot and cold functions, for example, so that is an issue. It's not so easy to handle different model versions and the whole workflow behind it was not made for machine learning tasks. So I would say it's good. Cloud functions can be utilized, for example, if you have a model and you want to try out a serverless approach or you want to quickly deploy it without scaling or without installing any server and doing all that overhead. So. Um, Cloud functions can be used, for example, as a way to test some things out in a serverless way or to transition from a compute engine environment to a serverless environment. This is where it's really good at because it's also or still quite easy to set up, but I would not recommend it using in a production environment for machine learning purposes. All right, so now that we have talked about the different ways and compared them, yeah, let's do a quick recap here. So we learned about the TensorFlow Serving Framework. We learned about the benefits of TensorFlow Serving and the benefits of AI Platform. We briefly introduced Cloud Functions and how to what advantages inference using Cloud Functions has. And also we briefly talked about Cloud Functions and what it means to do inference using Cloud Functions. And we compared all three approaches and which to use in a production environment.